Hello guys, welcome to another Wednesday video and today's guest is an awesome individual, a great part of the Cowen community and not just that but he also provides content streams and does a lot of things that we will talk about in this video. We have the one and only Mr. Mawa himself, how you doing? I like how you say my name. Hello, happy to be here. And uh, that was one hell of an intro. I really like that. Thank you. You, know, you deserve it. You deserve it. You know, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, uh, this is a uh, this is a part where we want to meet everybody in the community, everybody who's been part of it, and you know, provides for the community itself. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Is when your very first card game or something like that? Means, <laughs> I've I actually have been playing card games for pretty much my entire life. I started with Magic: The Gathering uh, when I was very young, though, and I think I didn't truly enjoy Magic: The Gathering because it was a little bit too complex for my age. But I loved Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I played the, the hell out of Yu-Gi-Oh. It was fantastic. I actually um, I was the uh, sub-national uh, champion one year in my country of Yu-Gi-Oh. And I've been competing a lot in it when I was a teenager, but then I, I dropped it. I stopped gaming for a while, but then like in my later 20s, well, mid-20s, I hopped back into it. And I played Duelist, you know, Shadowverse, Hearthstone, and I fell in love with Gwen. You know, oh. Not the first game I've met, but it could really well be the last for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, did. definitely. Like, I love the all this part about went i really really enjoy everything that they have done and look i i actually enjoyed Yu -Gi -Oh myself so much that was actually same my very first card game i collected cards before but that was my very first card game yes. now um another thing as what's your favorite faction and why is that well this is a very easy question for me to answer i'm pretty sure you know the answer as well it's Nilfgaard. Uh, I am an autoproclaimed Nilfgaard main. I actually, in my channel, I'm doing, like, I decided to just do 100% Nilfgaard laddering. So all of my Mamar points, or whatever you want to call it, are actually attributed to Nilfgaard. Like, I've, I've been laddered with anything else. Uh, it's my favorite faction because it's, in my opinion, not, not to diss all the other factions, but in my opinion, it is the best design one uh, because... And I think it's due to the fact that they gained more experience, the developers themselves. You know, when they made Nilfgaard, they had, like, they had all this experience from previous uh, factions that they designed. And I think they did a little bit of a better job at it, at making it more complex and more fascinating. Even though it's not uh, one of the strongest right now, clearly, uh, I do think that in the future, Nilfgaard has a lot of potential because they do a lot of things really well now. They just need a little bit more late game power, I think. But I love the faction. I love Reveal. I love the Spies. I just honestly love everything about it. It, it has my favorite uh, card of the game, but maybe that's a, a question for later. I don't know. <laughs> I, I actually agree with, here with you. And also, Nilfgaard is one of my favorite. It's my favorite faction. And the reason for it is ah, just... Ah, there uh, we go. Order will triumph! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> you know? And, but the, the reason for it is because it's the underdog. And... To a certain degree, you have to outplay your opponent, and there is so much satisfaction when that happens. Like oh, I can go, no. I can go, like you know, one to three, um, um, you know. But that one game was worth it. That one game, I played my heart yeah. out, and it paid out. Mm. And I, I, I don't know if, if you feel the same way, but yeah. Yeah, the satisfaction on that is just right there. Now, uh, in my in my eyes, it's the most rewarding faction. Basically, in my eyes, it's the it's the faction that uh, gives you the biggest pat on the back when you prevail, and it's also I, I truly believe that with Nilfgaard, I I, I believe may, people may may not agree with me, and that's fine, but I personally believe that with a, a more Vran control deck, you technically can beat anybody, but you got to make all the perfect plays, and that's like near impossible in Gwent because sequencing of cards, like there's so many different approaches you can take in a match, like it's it's tough. But I do feel like it's the kind of deck because of Morvran's ability to search for a specific answer. And I feel like it has all the tools, but it's very difficult to pilot. And I'm learning myself daily how to play it, really, uh, improving. I'm, I'm doing my best, obviously. But the latter can be tough, of course, with Consume Monsters being, you know, the number one predator. But 
yeah, I agree with you completely. Uh, it is super, super rewarding to play with and win. It feels great. Now, uh, well, you're a Nilfgaard main, and could you tell us what would you like to change in order for Nilfgaard to be a little bit better as a faction? I think I think all Nilfgaard truly needs is a little bit more late game power. We have the likes of Tibor, but I don't think Tibor is that consistent. Uh, in some games, Tibor is very strong, but in others, unless you have proper support with milling, you like against monsters. A lot of times, you make them draw one of their like last neckers, which is huge. You know, like it's stuff like that. So it's it's not the most reliable. And I feel like Nilfgaard is really lacking that. I feel like Nilfgaard has the power to easily take one round, but they kind of like run out of gas later down the line, you know? And that's why you have to be very smart with the cards that you play. And that's why sequencing is so important. And I got to say that I also, you know, just want to uh, mention out there that I love the passive. <laughs> I absolutely, I, I think it's, the, it's not the best passive in the game, but it's the one that I like the most because I think it's, both fair, balanced, and it's just all good all around. I kind of wish all factions had that, you know? <laughs> it's just great. Yeah, the interaction. Uh, the, also, the the when we had just first about the reveal of the faction, people were like, eh, you throw one card. But, like, you know, it goes to your deck. And number two, if you're skillful enough and you're keeping track of your deck, you can actually bring that card back in one way or another. And you are actually having control over your deck. That is something that uh, I feel that Nilfgaard does really, really well. Yeah, th th this reminds like that's a good that's a good. Uh, this reminds me of a very cool game that I had uh, against Skoyato in which they gave me with the operator. They gave me like a buffed up Truvio in the last round. I replaced it. And uh, they played more in first because they saw that I no longer had their Squirtle card in my hand. And then I fished for that ambush. Look, good look, here. high five, because my last video was exactly about that. They did, they, they did the same thing. They gave oh, me a card really? card, oh, and I'm like, I'm going to throw it back. And then I knew that I had an emissary. So I'm like, it's coming back. Don't worry about it. So then once I saw the morning play, I'm like, aha, trap. Yeah. You know, it's because... <laughs> They can actually see, I don't know if you guys know about this, but they can actually see the faction of the card exactly. that they gave you. So the moment mm -hmm. that you put it away, they're like, okay, uh, Morin is worthless. So then you bring it back with different kind of abilities. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's very, very fun to play. And as a whole, I love the faction. I do believe it can be tweaked here and there, but, uh, you know, I can only pray. Uh, now, when is a game that I'm very passionate about, and I've seen that you're very passionate about. Uh, what do you think can be done in order to improve a little bit better, better as a whole? What would you like to see? Um, I would like to see more complex designs like the Raw Tosser. I think the Raw Tosser is one of the best designed cards in the game uh, because it's both interactive. Uh, it has a lot of different potential outcomes which is very good in a card. Like when a card can give you a lot of different potential outcomes, it's very rich as a card, I feel. Uh, and I think they could implement more designs like that. I don't know exactly what it would be, but more cards that I like the, the, the timer aspect on cards, for example, uh, that adds a lot, like I said, a lot of interactivity, which is very important in a card game, even though some people use the term interactive in a confusing way. <laughs> they, don't, they don't properly understand that, I feel. But I think uh, more cards like that, basically. more Less straightforward cards and more cool, complex effects. And, like, more archetypes. We, we, we just need, like, I just think Gwent is so fun to play now for me. Like, some people th say that they're a bit tired of the meta. I personally enjoy it. Uh, the thing is, because I get to ladder with Nilfgaard. I get to ladder with uh, decks that I feel are... Uh, not ladder because I'm laddering only with Nifgard, but I play in casual against you know high rank players with decks that I feel like are underrated right now. Like for example, discard brand. I think discard brand is better than people give it credit for. I'm not saying it's the best thing out there by any means, but I think it's stronger than people think, uh, especially against the likes of Scoyatel because Morgvark just can absorb all the scorches and all that. I don't know. I, I feel like 
I ramble a lot, by the way. Get used to that. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine, dude. That's fine. I do the same thing. Uh, but no, <laughs> I can't I, control myself. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the passion, the fire within yeah. that is really good. But like, no, I'm telling you, like, when obviously it can improve certain things and everything, but the game itself is very young. It's being it's, it, the developers. That's what we need. It's, it's really, really young, right? And uh, now, um. I, I, I don't know, as a person who loves to play meme decks, you know, I like to be the underdog, I like to be the one that is not like, swimming against the river and not playing the meta itself. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I've noticed that okay. I've always have a chance. I've always have a chance. So I feel that that balance is, the balance state is really, really good. And that is something that is very hard to accomplish on card games as a whole. So... It's also like one of the beautiful things about Gwent and one of the things that make it very different from every single other card game and why it's my favorite card game and why I would be very happy to basically dedicate my entire channel to it and just focus on Gwent so much is because there's no health. You don't have to attack your opponent. And this means that in Gwent, aggro does not exist. You can make a case for very proactive decks. You can make a case for very control-heavy decks. You can make a case for, you know, different types of strategies. But regardless of the way you approach at it, there is one simple fact, and that is that you get to play all your cards. Every match. You know, like, you, you get to play your entire hand is what I'm trying to say. Like, you get to implement no, your correct. strategy. Yes. Um, that is something that I was uh, okay. actually experiencing on uh, with my wife she she likes to play hearthstone and then mm -hmm. i i constantly saw i'm like so the game just finished at four or five mana so and then you know comes to happen so the game just i see pyro warrior five <laughs> six five six mana so that's something that i was like ah, i don't i just i just don't feel like i'm getting the full cake so i don't i don't feel like i'm having my full defenses i don't feel like i'm getting rewarded while well, went is actually more like a a poker strategy yes game. yes like, yes exactly like a card can have two strength right but it buys you a play it buys you a turn and sometimes you can actually that two play will force your enemy to play an 11 gold card plus an effect so your two bronze card technically just purchases you that difference and it becomes that much more stronger. According mm. of how you play your hand, you will be rewarded. And that is something that really attracts me about the Nilfgaard oh. faction itself. Because it's, it's kind of deceptive. They're like, okay, it has like bad effects on some of them. You know, you have to play them on certain way. But when you achieve that, and whenever you know the tricks and everything, it gets so rewarding. I, I really love that faction. For example, like very, there's very small details playing Nilfgaard that can make the entire difference. Something that I've been doing a lot myself recently is leading off with a raw tosser, actually. And the reason I lead off with a raw tosser a lot of times is because knowing the matchup that I had in front of me, I know where they want to stack their units first. You know, if it's Squirtel, I know that they either want to go in the range row with Dragoons or they want to go in the melee row with Elven Mercenaries. If I'm facing Northern Realms, it's all about that Siege row. And the thing is, I do this because I can summon an Impair Brigade after that, and it's 8 strength, so it's not vulnerable to Alth or Thunder. And then the Cal Carcass goes away the next turn, and I can summon an Emissary and not have to worry about picking another Impair Brigade and have them being the same amount of strength and thus vulnerable to Scorch and or Igni. So small details like that in sequencing make the entire difference in a match. And that's what's so beautiful about Gwen in my eyes. Like yeah. that's yeah. a very important aspect, you know? Yeah, that's, know. that's very, no, no, it's very true. Like I've experienced it myself. I've played Nilfgaard a lot, but yeah. I'm guilty that I did not play Calvet. Okay, and uh, and I oh, never realized. You missed out a lot of I know, fun, no, man. no, you know, and I just realized oh. that. I just realized that because I I played a mirror match, and on my brain the sequencing was proper, but what he was doing, he was just buying time to make a better sequence, and his better sequence completely outplayed me, and I was like, okay, my my had to use her. That was that was amazing. 
I love the way that you actually play me. You know, and I felt good. Even though I had lost, I had learned yeah. something and it was really, yeah. really awesome. And I think that that's a huge part of the charm of Went. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot about like whenever you lose, I can always look back and, and be like, if I would have done this and this and this, I would have won. And that's a beautiful, a beautiful thing in a card game. Uh, I am a very emotional person, so I get very excited. And I also get very mad. I get salty. I, I'll admit it. I'm human. Uh, I, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I rage, you know, and I'm like, oh, I got, I got fucked over here. I drew this. I drew that. But in reality, I, I lost because of other things. And, you know. Uh, when I cool down, I admit it, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely like, it's not like other card games where you can just get this crazy out of hand burst and you die before you get to do anything. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, like it's, I played a lot of card games that in, in which this happens, you know, Hearthstone, uh, even Duelist, which is a game that I covered with for a long time. There's these crazy out of hand combos. And sometimes you feel like you got stolen out of your win, you know, and it's, uh, I think a lot of developers in the past have mistaken uh, this unpredictability with a good thing. And some people like, uh, you know, to watch it. But as a player, it gets tiring very fast. And with Gwent, it's uh, such a different experience because whenever you lose, you're like, okay, how, I, how do I become better? How do I make it so that this, this doesn't happen to me again? And it's a constant learning process, a constant learning process that it's also affected by the the changes in the metagame and i feel like there's a pattern that repeats itself in, in gwen there's like some high level players that kind of like are constantly innovating and then you got all this this entire army of people who are just net decking you know what i mean but but these people up there i've seen people at like the high end of the ladder and they play the weirdest shit and it's beautiful to watch i don't know i i feel like there's so much to learn in a game that at the very at the very first glance seems so simple and yet becomes the most complex of them all in my eyes. It's it's really something else. This game is is something special. Yeah, it, I, it I, I see it like is. that. It truly, truly is. Um, and I, like that's something that I tell my friends is like it. The concept is very simple. Have more strength than your enemy. Mm -hmm. That's it. But the way, the journey that you're gonna go through to get it is what is really, truly gonna make your experience on the game. And that is just fantastic. So I really, really enjoyed that aspect of the game. Well, spoilers, we both really like Gwent. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's that's really, really good. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself as in like, where can people find you? Where can people see you? What's coming? What's in the future for uh, Mr. Mega Mogway right here? Well, I'm basically a fake Brazilian that plays card games. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Spanish. I, I say that because I have a Brazilian flag in the background. I get asked uh, about that a lot. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and I have a, a Twitch channel as well. Uh, they're both Mega Mogwai. Uh, Mogwai from the Gremlins movie, the little, you know, cute creature that's called Gizmo. That's a Mogwai. You know, you didn't know. And uh, I got my name from that. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. The more, the more you know. <laughs> you learned something today. <laughs> I did. But. <laughs> yeah, and uh, basically that's where, you know, I upload Gwent videos uh, on a frequent basis and I do stream every day, mostly Gwent as well. And uh, I love what I do as well. And I also have a Twitter. Awesome. That's where you can find me. Of course, we will have a link to every single thing of this. Make sure you check him out, guys. He's an awesome streaming and an awesome content creator, you know. And we can truly see the passion on your work. And for that, personally, let me say thank you for what you do for Gwent. And thank you for being part of this great community. You are part of I appreciate Wendt. it, man. You're part of Went and you're part of what makes it amazing. Well, oh, any, man. That, any that's, shout outs? That's big words right there. Oh, no. No, it's, oh. Just, it's just the truth. And, you know, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, just. There's, there's like nobody specific that I really, I, I feel like there's so many people that deserve like recognition in this community. Uh, I, I saw like e even like lesser known people. I saw you actually uh, interviewing my boy Devil Driven uh, not yeah. too long ago. I love that guy. Fucking great guy. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, outstanding dude. And there's so many people out there that just contribute so much. We got fantastic streamers nowadays. You know, we got likes of Swim, Merchant. We have... Uh, mcbearded who's growing more and more and he totally deserves it 
you have so so many i mean you yourself stream as well like so many good content creators out there we have this community is growing really fast and uh considering it's closed beta it's truly astonishing to see uh i just implore you guys to if, you, if you're passionate about the game just watch as many people as you as you can and uh choose your favorite content creators it's all about styles like i know that i'm, I'm a very loud person uh, I'm what you would call passionate, and I, I, I freak the fuck out sometimes. <laughs> and some people love that. Some people hate it. Some people like chill people. You know, some people don't like screaming. Some people don't like <laughs> cussing. Some people, you know, uh, don't like Spaniards. I don't know, but it, it, it happens, and I understand it. So there's a lot of – what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of variants out there. Like you got Mr. Viking Voice Merchant. You got Chill King Black Tooth. You got Swim with you know his high ranked laddering and his memes and all that goodness you got a lot of good shit to choose from and if you are into this game you know you're lucky in that regard because there's a lot out there and i'm happy to be a part of this community and i was happy to be here i was looking forward to it actually i've been you know following this channel for a bit awesome thank you so dude that actually means a lot to me thank you so <laughs> much and um well with these guys we got nice warm and cozy but we're gonna have to say goodbye. And I would like to say that on our future videos, we will have more of what you want. So let me know what you would you like to see on our future content, and we will try to provide it to the best of our capabilities. Just make sure you leave it on the comment section, and I'll see you guys next time. Leave a like and subscribe. Thank you. See ya.